Hello and welcome back. In this video today, we're going to be talking about lumped capacitance and the analysis of heat transfer with buildings under this assumption. So, so let's get started with the definition of the problem statement here. This is our building. I've just drawn it as a cube. And when we say we're going to be doing a lumped capacitance method, we are assuming that this entire building is at some single given temperature that the temperature actually doesn't vary throughout this whole building and in the next video we're gonna look at the validity of this type of assumption so for this problem we're gonna define the system to be this whole building and it has the outer surface here which is exposed to the outdoors and for this problem we're also going to include some heat gain within the space so this is heat added to the building from computers and from people lights plugs and loads as we would call it we also have we're going to assume some heat transfer from convection out of the building and we're also going to assume that we're going to be in a dynamic state so that the temperature of this building is not at steady state and it is changing so in our most basic basic terms from thermodynamics we know that energy is a conserved quantity so the amount of energy going in less the amount of energy going out has to equal the rate change of energy for the system in steady state problems we would make this go to zero but in this case we're going to include this term so let's go ahead and start replacing these terms with our items from here. So what's going into the system or what is heat added? That is Q generated from the space and I'm just gonna leave the subscript off here in the future. We have Q convection out, which I'm going to write out as H area, surface area, the temperature of the building minus the outdoor air temperature. And this is equivalent to uh, an MC delta T term. But instead of mass, we're actually going to use volume times density. This is a mass times a specific heat of our building. And we have this derivative term here, a rate change of temperature with respect to time. Now, at this point, I'm going to make some useful substitutions that will make our math a little easier when we're going to be solving for this temperature of this building as a function of time. And to do that, we're going to make the first substitution that we are going to call a resistance R as 1 over the heat, uh, the uh, convection coefficient times the surface area. And the second substitution is we're going to define this capital C for capacitance equal to the volume times density times the specific heat. So this is a thermal resistance analogous to electrical resistance and this is a thermal capacitance or how much how much energy can this material store before the temperature goes up or down by say a degree. And let me just be clear, the outside air temperature we're defining as this T infinity term. So let's go ahead and replace some of these terms. So we have our generated heat within the space from people, lights, and equipment. We have a one over R term, which is related to this. I hope you can see that. We had to take the reciprocal. Temperature of the building minus T infinity is equal to a capacitance times this derivative term. Now at this point we could go ahead and start trying to solve this differential equation using the tools at our disposal. But we actually have one more sol substitution that's, that's useful to make our problem easier. And I'm going to just show you that and then tell you why 
it works or is useful in a second. So we're going to define a theta variable to be t minus t infinity. So that would be this term. This here would be a theta. Now the, the other important fact about why this was chosen this way is that if I take d theta with re respect to time, so I take theta's derivative, this we're assuming this outdoor air temperature is constant with respect to time. So when it comes to the derivative, the d theta dt is exactly the same as the straight temperature of our building with respect to time. And so we can actually replace this dt dt term with this d theta dt term. And that will actually make our formula even, even more simple. So let me go ahead and, and rewrite our equation again. Minus 1 over r times theta is equal to c d theta dt. At this point, I want to just rearrange this equation to put it in a more standard form that we will see. I'm going to move the d theta dt term over to this side. I'm going to divide both sides by the capacitance C. So we will actually have a, actually let me, let me move this over to the side with the dt. So this is 1 plus 1 over RC theta is equal to the Q dot. At this point, I hope that you have some experience with differential equations. If not, I suggest you go find a video and the one you would want to be doing a YouTube search for would be a first order linear differential equation which this exactly fits and the method for solving these types of differential equations is using something called an integration factor and because we don't have time to go into that I'm just going to tell you that the integration factor is e to the integral of this function multiplied by our variable of interest 1 over RC DT and since our I were assuming our resistance and our capacitance is constant with respect to time our integrating factor just simply becomes 1 over RC multiplied by T if you can imagine you took this out and the integral of dt is just t, and so this is our integrating factor. Now we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by this integrating factor. And let me come back here and just, I forgot to divide it by c. I divided everything on both sides by c. It used to be over here, and now I want it underneath both of these fractions. So let's multiply this out by our integrating factor. So we have a d theta dt times e to the 1 over RC T plus 1 over RC theta E to the 1 over RC to the T is equal to Q dot divided by C E to the 1 over RC T. Now here's the magic step of first order linear differential equations, this whole side can be reduced to the derivative of two things being multiplied by each other. And this is really an expansion of the product rule. And this would be the, the derivative of theta multiplied by our integrating factor. And I hope you can see that if you do the product rule with this, you'd get this statement out here. And that is still equivalent to Q dot over C E to the 1 over R C times time. Now we can go ahead and integrate both sides of this with respect to time. So if we do that, the integration really just is a cancellation of this derivative. So on this side, we'll just simply get back theta E to the 1 over RC T and on this side if you can imagine this is a constant was pulled out of the integral and the integral of E to something is 
that thing back, except we'll need to have the inverse of this constant here that would have been pulled out. And so we can break this as q dot over c, which was our, let me undo that, which was our original item we pulled out, but this would also have to be multiplied by an rc term, the inverse of this, and then we get back our e to the 1 over rc to the t. And of course we can't forget we are going to have some constant here as well. So one of the things we can do is we can see that these capacitances cancel each other out. We can divide both sides of this equation by this this uh, exponential term, and if you can imagine that, that would make, we would get rid of that, get rid of that, and this C, it would be divided by this exponential, but if you brought that back to the top, you would get the same exponential, but with a minus sign right here. So let me just rewrite this a little cleaner. So we have theta is equal to our resistance times Q dot plus our constant integration we haven't found yet, e to the minus 1 over RCT. And at this point we need to know what our initial conditions were for this differential equation. We're going to make this very basic assumption that we have some time equal to 0. We're just going to assign some value, some point in time to be equal to 0. And at that point our theta is going to just be our initial theta. And if you remember what theta was, this will be our initial temperature minus our outdoor air temperature. So now if you can imagine, if we put zero in for T here, this whole exponential will go to one. And we still have the C, R, Q, and this now is the initial theta. And so we can solve very straightforwardly for C, we have to just subtract out this RQ term, and so you have not Q, but the initial theta minus RQ. So we are now in the home stretch. So now we can take our result here for our constant of integration, and I actually, uh, I should have used a different letter. This constant of integration is different than this capacitance C. So I actually was using very poor nomenclature, but I hope that wasn't too confusing. This C and this C and this C were capacitances along with this one, and this was a constant of integration. Uh, so we could have, uh, we could have just defined this to be, you know, say, D for a constant, and we could have made this a D, and this a D, and this a D. So just to be clear, um, that was poor choice of variable names. So we have here theta is equal to RQ plus we're putting in what we found for that constant of integration. So I'm going to do it like this. You can see that hopefully. And we still have this e to the minus 1 over rc times multiplied by time. And so now we have a formula that we have a relationship between theta, which has got our building temperature along with it, and our time. So let's just get this in a little cleaner form. So if you can imagine if I subtracted this term from this side and then divided both sides by this red term, I would get something that would look like theta minus RQ all over, do this in red, be our initial theta minus RQ is equal to the decaying exponential that has this form. And to just make it a little more concrete, we will actually replace our theta back with our temperatures. And so this is T minus T infinity minus RQ. And this is our initial temperature minus T infinity minus RQ. And this makes sense. 
And why is this useful to us? Well, this equation is something that we can now say, okay, I have a building. And for instance, I want to know when can I turn my systems off? And if I turn my systems off, what temperature will this building go to over a period of time? And you'd be surprised if you have a very large concrete multi-story building, this temperature really does not change as fast as you may initially think. There is a large thermal capacitance for these monolithic structures that you can see in large buildings. And if you want to do optimal start time, so you want to make sure that if you start heating and I have only a certain amount of heating capacity, can I make sure that I start it early enough to get this temperature to a comfortable level, comfortable level before people arrive? And so this is something we'll be using in possibly future videos, but I wanted to go through the, the mathematics of this just so you understand where this derivation came from and what assumptions it had. This is a simple, essentially a <laughs> single zone system or a single temperature cup lumped capacitance analysis where we have some heat gain within the system and we have heat transfer out of the system due to convection uh, but we 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 actually abstracted that that concept out um, this r term could be replaced with something for conduction or any other thermal heat transfer process as long as we have some thing that makes sense to fill in for this r value here but We'll save that for a future video. We'll also save the validity check for when this is appropriate to do uh, for future videos, and I hope you'll join me then. See you in the next videos.